I just got back from abroad on Sunday after having attended a UNESCO conference that was held in the plurinational state of Bolivia. That's the official name of Bolivia. This conference was held from July 23rd through July 26th. And the first two days were for high-level senior staff working in education ministries and in education departments. The last two days were for ministers of education from Latin America and from the Caribbean. At those meetings, the ministers of education pledged to uphold and to promote the sustainable development goals that were proclaimed by the United Nations. And now you might be wondering, what are the Sustainable Development Goals, or in short, SDGs? Well, in 2015, the United Nations proclaimed that together, countries, governments, non-government organizations, and individuals, so together, we have to try and make our world a better place. So the UN established 17 goals that countries should try to reach by the year 2030. And some of these goals are, for example, eliminate extreme poverty by the year 2030. Another goal is to reduce inequality within and among countries by 2030. And goal four of the SDGs pertains to education. And it reads, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In other words, by 2030, everybody should have the opportunity to acquire formal education and quality education. In addition, these goals promote lifelong learning for all. And so in other words, preschool children should have the opportunity to get education. Persons in the community who are physically and mentally challenged should have the opportunity to acquire education. And also, senior citizens should be given the opportunity to learn something if they wish to do so. Now, when we talk about opportunities, we're not only talking about school buildings, but a library is also a place of learning. Providing access to internet is a way of acquiring information and education. A museum, a park, these are all kinds of opportunities through which people learn. So the UNESCO meeting that I attended ended with ministers of education of Latin America and the Caribbean pledging, and we pledged our support to promote the development of inclusive and equitable equality education and lifelong learning in our respective countries. I submitted a report of my trip to the Council of Ministers yesterday, and if any members of the press or anyone in the community would be interested in obtaining a copy, I'll make sure that you get one. Upon my return on Sunday, I got off the plane and was immediately taken to the departure hall to say bon voyage to the students who were leaving to go to the Netherlands to further their studies. I had the opportunity to encourage many of the students as well as their parents. And unlike years gone by, when the departure of our students was a very sad and tearful occasion, these students were smiling and optimistic about their trip and their future as students in the Netherlands. I guess we can contribute or attribute this change to our modern means of transportation and technology. When I left for the Netherlands many moons ago, I didn't expect to see my parents and my family again until after my studies. And speaking to them on a regular basis was really out of the question. That was way too expensive in those days. Nowadays, students are in constant contact with their family through WhatsApp and Skype and through other means. And before you know it, they're back in St. Martin four months later, just in time to spend Christmas with their families. This year, 
161 students applied for study financing. 122 students were granted study financing and 37 students were denied. They didn't meet the qualifications. 41 students were granted study financing for the Netherlands. And some of the popular study destinations for our students are the United States of America, where 42 students got financing for studying. Canada, 14 students. St. Martin at the USM, 12 students. The UK, 8 students. And as far as studies in the Caribbean are concerned, a couple of students opted to study in Aruba, Curaçao, St. Kitts, Trinidad, and Tobago. The most popular study majors among students are computer science, psychology, marketing, and finance. On a more personal note, with regards to study financing and the division to st of study financing, you might have heard that the head of the study financing division, Mr. Aventurin, met with a serious motorcycle accident some weeks ago and had to be flown out to Santo Domingo. Thank God he had the necessary surgeries and is recuperating very well. Unfortunately, I wasn't here at that time when the accident happened, but the support towards him and towards his family, as well as the prayers by his colleagues at the Ministry of Education, they were just overwhelming. And we continue to pray for his speedy recovery and his safe return to St. Martin, and of course, his return back to work. has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. that uh, from the 550 million euro, it will come in trenches. Now, um, late but welcome. A lot of people never believe that this day will come. Tell the people of St. Martin again how the funds will be executed, execute, yeah? and um, how soon we will see some, some work um, at the various areas that um, allotted to. 
Thank you, Mr. Brown, for that um, question. Indeed, I will reiterate what you stated. Many thought that the funds would not, not come, but that was not me. I have always been confident that the monies that were allocated for St. Martin, that St. Martin will get that. Of course, there were conditions that we had to meet. We met those conditions, hence this is the results of the hard work that we have put in. Yesterday, as I indicated, 9.2 million is just to start because remember, in the first tranche, 55 million is, was transferred to the World Bank Trust Fund. The first part of that, $9.2 million, has been allocated for the beginning. It's just a portion of it to start the emergency, um, the emergency projects like I listed before. But indeed, I never had any doubt, and I still don't have doubt on the rest of the funds coming to St. Martin. But again, results will show that um, what I'm stating, as you see today. Um. The central bank stated in a press release that the circulation of certain guilders will stop or have stopped as per yesterday, July 31st. Elaborate a bit more on the stoppage of the circulation of those guilders in particular. I'm sure you have been notified. Thank you. Good morning <clears throat> to my colleagues. And to the listeners, thank you, Stephen, for that question. Um, the central bank, indeed, um, what they intend to do is to slowly take out of circulation uh, those, um, how do you say that, those billetten bills that are no longer uh, meet the requirements uh, for circulation. And that is just a standard procedure uh, that any central bank does uh, periodically. So that's all it is. Um, maybe you were trying to connect it to the fact that bills might be depleted in, in two years from now. Um, but again, in the previous uh, press briefing, I mentioned that, that um, that's nothing to really worry about. It's just to inform the people of the day-to-day -day operations of, uh, of the central bank. And this is one of the exercises they do uh, periodically. Just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is. <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Vib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Wynwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Who you're for?
Hotel Lab. Connecting you. Installation of cameras in and around town. Um, how soon do we foresee the completion of this? And is there a time frame as to when those will be operational? I am pleased to announce that, first of all, the location where the surveillance will be taking place has been rented. That lease agreement was signed. And the installation of that equipment in that facility is also going to start. The recruitment has already started, and they're going to begin working. If I'm not wrong, I believe today they're going to start on the 1st of August. Uh, the cameras are already in their location, so it's, um, it's, it's on track, and we hope to keep it on track. Children that are leaving to study in various countries of the world, um, from, your, from your office, do you plan to, to make some mechanism to encourage younger teachers? Um, we have a lot of students here um, at St. Martin. And do you have preferable destination, like teachers coming to recruit teachers from abroad? Do you have any um, areas, um, countries that you would like to see teachers come to St. Martin to teach our children? Thank you for the question. No, we don't. We're looking for teachers who are qualified in particular subjects uh, or subject areas. So if you're qualified uh, and meet the standards that we have, then it doesn't matter where you come from. So uh, primary school teachers, we'd prefer if they're trained here on St. Martin and uh, the programs are here. It's just to get youngsters or older persons who want to change their career uh, just to get them into the program. But it can be done here at the University of St. Martin. Again, my appeal would be to anyone who's interested in teaching, go for it. It's a noble profession. It can be a drive somewhere, like um, a drive to, to encourage, to excite the, the, the youngsters to, to, to join. Um. Um, that would be something that we would be looking at in the course of this year. As you know, I just been in this position for one month. So we have another six months because teachers, uh, persons who would like to get a study grant, they would need to do that, apply for that by the end of this year, the end of de December. So in the next couple of months, that would be something that we would be looking at to encourage persons who want to go into the teaching profession to do so. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. Hello, Sir Martin. My name is Jose Helga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sports because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSN Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter, hashtag are you in? One. Two. Three. Four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One. Get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, 
Never be afraid to ask for help and look for the one in terms of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two. Three. Four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Last year, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, I participated in the <coughs> Indian missions in uh, uh, Barbuda and also Dominica. Um, yes, I, I, I still can say, I mean, it was just after the hurricane and, uh, and uh, there was no uh, electricity or water, of course, and uh, people were still in the end post-hurricane um, trauma stage. Uh, it was really difficult because we had to accomplish the mission and we had to collect the data. Uh, we had to put up, uh, pull out uh, uh, people and resources. Uh, but to me, what I remember is uh, you know, how people were dedicated to the works that they are doing, and they were, I mean, despite of all the factors that they were coming to the work in time, they were collecting the data and uh, trying to, to recover from the disaster. I do remember also in uh, uh, Barbuda, the, the, there is a scientific research center with, uh, with a large container, you know, sea, sea, sea ship container size. Uh, that was blown away to, uh, I don't know, to 200 meters, something like that, with all the materials, with all the equipment that showed me the strength of the car. So now I, 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 I look around with a different eye. So I'm a uh, Good morning, everyone. I'm Jay Haviser, archaeologist here in St. Martin, director of the St. Martin Archaeological Center. I actually have founded uh, three archaeological foundations, one in Bonaire, one in uh, Seva and this one in Samaj here. Um, uh, impact of these storms. I, yeah, I think it affected us all deep, the, living through it, going through it. My personal experience and our experience with the CMONC, the archaeological center here, is that the center was completely obliterated. The fortunate thing was that the artifacts had been sealed in plastic bags, the provenience, in plastic sealed uh, containers and put on shelves. The roof went, the walls went, all the shelves and everything collapsed, the roof and the walls collapsed, but we were able to save about 85% of the archaeological collection because they had been sealed in bags and in boxes and were under the rubble. We just had to dig them out. The really sad part was all of my early work, I've been the archaeologist in the Dutch Islands for 38 years. And all of my early work from the 80s and early 90s was slides and paper. Maps, field notes, drawings, that kind of thing. All of that was in cardboard boxes. We lost. All of that. So the only evidence of that research is the published reports that were produced from that evidence. But we lost that raw data. And I have to say one of our biggest reasons we lost it, we had tried to put the boxes away in a safer part of the facility, but I'm on a we were on a floor that was a high security floor because the Department of Justice as a requisitary officer. And they would not allow us access to the interior of the building for over a week. So Irma crushed everything. Maria came a few days later and soaked everything. And then we couldn't get in for a week and a half. Which means the mold and the rot had pretty much 
wiped out textiles, paper, things like that. So, yeah, we we got hit really hard. We're happy we saved what we could. We've got the containers that we've gotten things into now, and we are looking forward with the Department of Culture of getting a new space and moving forward and, and going forward. But I think that this is so important that not only are we learning, and this I want to learn how to better prepare, but not only are we learning, but we are interconnecting among ourselves. And this is bringing the kind of being closer together in our experiences, but also when things come up, helping each other out.